Welcome back to Las Vegas and Jason Belmonte, $10,000 richer. That's the bonus for dropping a 300 game under the lights. CEO Jeff Reese handing it off. Jason celebrates and Randy slides in for the interview. Congratulations, the 21st player to do it in PBA history. Talk about what you were thinking getting up in the 10th frame. Um, I just wanted to hit what I was looking and uh, and let the ball do the rest. I mean, uh, I knew I'd advance to the next round, so I knew there wasn't any of that pressure on me, and, and I, uh, I wanted to go down in history as one of the guys who have done it. So I, I tried to throw three really good shots, and it, it uh, came out. Congratulations. Great Cheers, job. Man. I appreciate it. Cheers. So a 300 game is great and fine and dandy, but he's still got some work to do. Belmo, Kretzer, the winner, moves on to the final four of the first major of the year, the PBA World Championship. Welcome back to Las Vegas. PBA World Championship Albee Division is down to its final match. Mike Fagan eliminated with a 220. Delmos 300 propels him to match number three. Brian Kretzer 231 was enough. You are now Jason Best Monty. Like that one. Nice play on words. Here's today's keys to victory. Brought to you by the makers of Alka Seltzer plus liquid gels. Belmonte has to avoid the 300 game hangover. And Kretzer, he just needs to chase left. He needs a ball that gets through it cleaner, has to get slower, and be able to use some of that area that Jason's created. Didn't like it. Almost became a Brooklyn strike. Afraid to go that way with the ball. Not a good thing when you're doubting yourself in the first frame. So freaking afraid to go that way with the ball. He is he does he mean he's afraid to go right with it? Yeah, I think he's afraid to get it to the right, and he's so good at sliding into the left gutter cap and just lofting and pushing across the head pin. It just seems like to me he needs to play to his strength, which is get soft, get on a little bit and get a shiny enough ball that pushes to it, and then we'll come off of it. I think the ball looked a little too dull at the end of the last match, and he was a little too square on it. This guy's not afraid to throw it to the right. Or throw it hard. Looking for his 13th straight strike here. That looks familiar. We take a look at the arsenal that Jason Belmonte has at his disposal. Yeah, he's throwing a critical theory. He can actually step it up one notch if he wanted to go stronger, go to a defiant. But after shooting 300 with that ball, I think I'd probably stay with it. Some sage advice, Randy. I mean, you've seen nothing to make you think that he needs to alter anything at all. This guy's in his wheelhouse right now. So Belmo after the strike. So he proves he's human. But right now, Brian Kretzer's got to feel like he's a uh, shark diving without a cage. And we are on the shark pattern. And he's wearing a meat vest, too. <laughs> Toe to head, Kretzer, nine spare in the first. Did not like his footing, and that became a Brooklyn effort. I think I can't make this. That time he slipped. So afraid that ball. Almost misses the head pin running away left, leaves the 369. And uh, this is not something you want to shoot at on a regular basis. Yeah, the demons are barking in his head right now. Good cover though. Great cover. Yeah. And he'll go backstage and do some adjusting. 
Well, he was using a Marvel, Marvel Pearl. He is now going to something else. Not sure what it is yet. He didn't get a good enough look. Yep, going to a Defiant, going stronger. Making a move here in the third frame. I would guess he's going to slide a lot deeper, get his hand way around it, and try and push it down the lane first. I can manage that. I think he went to something that he actually trusts will have a better chance of hooking back when he throws it right. Saw some of that during the week when you uh, when you pushed got pushed way left. If you didn't have enough surface, once you got it through the front, you could get through the middle and the back too. So, even if it's a little more surface than he'd like to use, he's got to get a feel for the lane. Got to feel like his ball is going to pick up and hook, and then Bel do the things it does. Belmo stepping up here in the third, strike spare, his lead at four. Remember the keys? No 300 game hangover. Right now, Jason Belmonte still a little fuzzy. Yeah, trying to trying to hydrate the head right now. Yeah, I know that feeling. Drop a couple of aspirin, take some water, clear the head. This one's left, and it's going to be a Brooklyn strike. And he's like, oh, ooh, oh okay, let's uh, let's not do that again. Strike there for Belmo, and he's trying to move on to the PBA World Championship Finals. Next Sunday, 1 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Oscu Palermo, Ryan Schaefer, Sean Rash have already booked their tickets. Belmo trying to join them. Fred Skirbo not going without a fight. He's down 14, needs a strike here in the fourth. It would be his first of this match. And he gets it. Well, you heard him the last time he threw the ball, or the first time he threw the ball on the left, left lane, Chris. He said, I can manage that. Once he sees his ball hook in the right place, he's a field guy. He's a lot like Pete Weber. Now he can, can make a run at him. Kretzer, a 231 in his first match, and a 231 in match number two as well. Completely different. Mm -hmm. Completely different types of games, though. Second game, got much more fortunate. Oh. My little ball should not solid nine. There's no way it should solid nine. Come on. <laughs> well, it's hard enough. I just ate 10 and I solid nine. Here you can look at the, the first four shots that uh, the BK threw and it was a little bit of a mess. Some left, some right. Looks a little bit like my golf game. The last three shots though have all been on target and he's much closer but I'm not so sure Jason's going to let him breathe. Thank you, Kegel, for the computer-aided tracking system. Kegel, the official training center of the PBA, located Central Florida, about 50 minutes south of myself, Jason Couch, and Norm Duke. Three in a row for Belmo. Yeah, I think you're right, Chris. I'm not sure he's going to give Kretzer very much breathing room. It's too bad. Brian found a nice shot, a nice line with the ball change, struck, and then solid nine right behind it. Belmonte goes Brooklyn and takes advantage of that great break by throwing two really good shots after it. Belmo made five televised appearances last season. This is his second already, was involved in the World Bowling Tour Finals, which was won by Mika Koivuniemi. The runner-up was Sean Rash. Rash has already advanced to next Sunday's PBA World Championship Final Four. Belmo trying to join him. Here's his effort in the sixth. Oh, a couple late drops. That could have been an ugly split. Some nines are a lot better than others. A little left of target, looks like. This ball breaks loose, goes right through the nose, and it could have been a big four. Instead, it's just the four. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. But check that one. And Belmo remains clean through six. Kretzer down 23. Nine spare, seven spare. Nine spare, strike, nine spare. He's on the right lane, which is where his first and only strike this match came. Ten. Do not adjust your audio. That was Brian Kretzer. Marries no. those two. having the easiest of times out here right now. So what goes through his mind at moments like this? Well, whatever it is, he tries to keep it to himself. I deal with the mental part of it mainly as I'm, I, you stay even keel. You know, a lot of guys out here get real animated, whether it's a good shot or a bad shot, they, they show their emotions. I kind of just keep them bottled up and allow my, you know, not to get too, ex too excited or too mad because you gotta, you gotta stay focused every shot. And if you allow your brain to start thinking about bad shots or, you know, oh, I ran that one out and that was awesome. And then you forget about the, your job at hand. There is Kretzer in the seventh, still seeking his second strike. Down 25. And he needs to start getting some momentum. That's not going to help. He's just completely out of rhythm now. A field guy that doesn't have a good feel for the lane is in big, big trouble. There's just nothing to fall back on. Belmo has had some fortuitous drops here. Look at this. Could have been ugly. Instead, it was a nine. Again on the left lane, another fortunate nine. Like you said, Chris, some nines are better than others. Belmo up 39. Bottom of the seventh, coming off a spare. Knife at a gunfight. That shot hasn't made it back to the head pin for really anybody, and not only does this make it back, but he throws the head pin around and cleans up all the mess. Strike number five for Belmonte. Looking for a double here. <laughs> what uh -oh. pin was that that just hopped up? Not sure, but he left the 510. He, he moved even deeper and tried to go with loft and just never got it going to the right in the right direction. Now in jeopardy of his first open frame. Or yes, his first open frame through eight. He's having a slight 300 game hangover right now. He's, he's beat up the soil pattern pretty good, and now it almost looks like he's run out of room on the left lane. That's the first time you've ever left a 510. Second time. I'll story the first time. <laughs> so both Kretzer and Belmo coming off open frames. Brian down 27. Here he is to close out the eighth. It's like Brian just keeps moving into more and more of Belmo's hook. Yeah, keeps moving into more and more trouble. About now is when Mike's strategy would have looked pretty good. Yeah. Still wouldn't have been on a strike, but. Uh, Valuable pickup that keeps him with at least shouting range. Best you can, excuse me, Rob, Rob the best you can shoot is 200. Belmonte is actually at 207 right now.
Still without a strike on that left lane, and only one here in match number three. Back to the weaker ball there, trying to get it back to go through the front of the lane, give himself a chance. Got through the front, but didn't go through the pins. Yeah, it looked like he tried to give it some more gas, some more hand, a little loft. Got it through the front part, like you said, but it, it was DOA when it got to the 1-3. Just like we talked about at the very beginning, that on the fresh, he could say softer would be good. Bell will eventually beat up the lane. It's going to be hard for him to strike. Off the open frame. Maybe looking at another one. Okay. Six, seven, ten, split. He needs a mark. Any kind of mark in the 10th frame, and he'll lock out Brian Kretzer. If he opens again, Kretzer can win. Back to back open frames for Belmo, who had a 300 game in match two. Any kind of mark right here. your mark that's a good one yes. he just punched his ticket to the dance <laughs> needs just four pins the dirty work is done time to close the door Big loft, splash, gets six, that's enough. And your number three overall seed, Jason Belmonte, advances. Sean Rash, Ryan Schaefer, Oscu Palermo waiting in the wings next Sunday for our first major. And we'll hear from Belmo when our coverage of the PBA World Championship from Las Vegas returns. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Barbizol. Start your day cool with new Arctic Chill Shaving Cream from Barbizol. Better by Barbizol. By Brunswick. Find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. By Geico. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. And by DV8. We are DV8. Tonight, we bowl. Welcome back to Las Vegas, and what a set of finalists we have for you next week at the PBA World Championship. Oscu Palermo, Ryan Schaefer, Sean Rash, and now Jason Belmonte added to the list. Time now for our Geico Championship recap. Match number one, Josh Blanchard in his first match under the TV lights did not go the way the young man wanted it, and he was quickly sent packing. Match two, Mike Fagan, 220. Not enough, because Belmo dropped a 300. Brian Kretzer's 231, also enough to advance. In match three, Belmo strikes in the first, third, fourth, fifth, and he just kind of kept on grinding it out, and he won it. He's standing by with Randy. Jason, it looked like you were suffering from a little bit of a 300 hangover there that last game. What was going on with the oil pattern and the lanes? Yeah, you know, uh, the, the second half of that game, we both started to see really early hook. And then for me in particular, it just read that fraction early and I couldn't get it to the break point where I wanted to. So um, if this game had gone on for another five more frames, uh, I don't know what I would have done. I, I was pretty lucky that the game ended when it did. How does it feel now to add your list of the four finalists that are going to compete for the world championships? You're looking for your first major. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, this is my first major championship uh, opportunity to win, and um, I, I feel great. And the guys who I'm bowling against, you know, they're awesome bowlers. It's going to be a great show, and, and I really can't wait to lace up against them. Well, thanks a lot, and best of luck to you. Cheers, mate. I appreciate it. Well, the 2009 PBA Rookie of the Year looking for a second tour title. 
and first major. Will he get it? Find out with us next Sunday, right back here in Las Vegas. Belmo, Rash, Schaefer, Palermo for the first major of the season. Jason Belmonte, a perfect 300 game in match number two, the 21st time it's ever happened under the TV lights, and he moves on. For Randy and Chris, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.